Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. So OpenAI has almost released DALI 3, their generative AI image generator that was actually one of the first to actually do this at all. And although they have not officially released it, they've teased a ton of what might make this uh, the most powerful model that we've seen since Stable Diffusion XL and a few other uh, niche fine tunes that are now showing uh, incredible capability. So let's get into it. I can't believe I saw this on Hacker News and then I click on it and it says not just yet. However, OpenAI has spilled a lot of what is going to be in Dolly 3 and I think it's really quite interesting. So they say here, uh, Dolly 3 understands significantly more nuance and detail than our previous systems, allowing you to easily translate your ideas into exceptionally accurate images. And this kind of makes sense given how much better uh, ChatGPT and the GPT language model in general is compared to when Dolly 2 came out which roughly correlated with uh, the release of GPT-3 and GPT-3.5. So as we know, especially with Stable Diffusion XL, when clip and the ability to understand language gets better and, and just context in general gets better, um, the ability to turn that into images vastly improves. And these first few images aren't incredibly impressive. I mean, they have some texture, which we know at one point was kind of a hard thing to do, but Stability AI has released a number of tools that can do that quite well. So they say here, modern text to image systems have a tendency to ignore words or descriptions, forcing users to learn prompt engineering. Dolly 3 represents a leap forward in our ability to generate images that exactly adhere to the text you provide. So again, more of the emphasis here is actually on the model understanding language, so like descriptions and words, um, to then make images. And this is interesting because it's, this sounds a lot like what um, Midjourney tries to do in that fewer words can mean more, and I would argue that, you know, Stable Diffusion in many ways is still more powerful than Midjourney because it allows you to fine tune and they're just very different tools. So it'll be curious where Dolly 3 actually lands here. And they show some of what this context is. So they show some background, foreground, and then some in between. So they say here that you have pedestrians enjoying nightlife in the background. There's a full moon between these streets. There is a young woman with red hair haggling with another subject here. So there's a multi-subjectivity sort of a awareness of context that Midjourney has slowly gotten better at and is probably the best at for, for now. Usually the way you get this kind of context in Stable Diffusion or Stable Diffusion XL is by selectively in-painting, which is kind of curious. So it looks like Dali 3, like Midjourney, is trying to do this in a single shot, which is really pretty cool. And of course, they're going to push that Dali 3 delivers significant improvements over Dolly 2. We know it does imagery. We don't really know if it will be capable of multiple angles or uh, the idea of sort of these tilt shift things you can produce with other tools. Also not sure if we'll be able to get video out. And what's curious is OpenAI has always really loved to showcase this sort of expressive oil painting filter, which I think they think really presents well with Dolly. Uh, Dolly has always been great with transposing paintings. So I think it's fair to say that most of what it's trained on still is sort of abstract, classical, and modern art. Now, what's really interesting, and what really plays into my earlier point about the language models being the key here and the core of Dolly 3 and what makes it so much more powerful is what they say here. So they say Dolly 3 is built natively on ChatGPT, which lets you use ChatGPT as a brainstorming partner and refiner of your prompts. Um, it's curious to use the word refiner here because um, Stability AI actually calls the secondary model in SDXL um, a refiner model, which is kind of curious. Uh, so they say, yeah, just ask ChatGPT what you want to see in anything from a simple sentence to a detailed paragraph. And I would argue that this is, again, something that Midjourney has tried quite hard to do because they say, most importantly, what you want to see. And I would say that Midjourney is predominantly an engine for producing things that humans like to see. Um, to a point that it almost completely detracts from and just separates entirely from what your text is. Um, more so like getting enough of the text right and then just presenting images that it knows humans like to see just from millions of iterations of feedback from humans clicking what they like more based on their text input. And now with the ability to fine tune and like modify a prompt mid uh, like as a step function, it knows even more. Um, so yeah, so they say here, when prompted with an idea, ChatGPT will automatically generate a tailored detailed prompt for Dolly 3. So they basically just baked in the workflow that some people use where they actually use ChatGPT to create prompts for Midjourney, which they probably really liked because it gave them a lot of free training data. Uh, if you like a particular image, but it's not quite right, you can ask ChatGPT to make tweaks with just a few words. 
Dell A3 will be, will be available for ChatGPT Plus and enterprise customers. So if you're paying for ChatGPT, you're gonna have this in early October, so just a few weeks. And the images you create with Dell A3 are yours to use and you don't need permission to reprint or merchandise them. And this is actually quite big. Uh, the bigger players in AI will have a better to get this right, or at least just to even have the legal ability to do so. Um, this is something that's still kind of up in the air with stable diffusion. Tons of people do it anyway, because right now there's no real way to understand what is or isn't generated with a specific model, which I think is entirely fine. Uh, but yeah, so they have some images of a hedgehog here, and they mentioned they focus on safety, which this is pretty much just keeping Congress off your back and making sure you don't piss off the wrong people in government. They further double down on safety by preventing quote unquote harmful generation, which is kind of crazy because right now with Dolly 2, you can't even generate pictures of known people, which again leads me to think that this is probably going to be a very cool tool to be monetized by Microsoft and in the kind of enterprise tools. But in terms of really pushing the edges of what's possible with um, generative AI, I don't think we're really gonna see that here. Um, it might be really powerful and quick, but I don't think it's going to be the most capable by any means. Um, and then again, uh, they mentioned this internal testing, which is kind of curious. So they say, we're also researching the best ways to help people identify when an image was created with AI. We're experimenting with a provenance classifier, which basically means they're probably uh, working on some new form of imperceptible or almost non-perceptible um, just watermarking with these images, which has been done before. Uh, a new internal tool that can help us identify whether or not an image was generated by DALL-E 3. So again, covering their, their legal basis here. And we hope to use this tool to better understand the ways the generated images might be used. Um, now this, this is very insidious and we're making some videos about this going forward because I think people need to know about this so that we can avoid a situation where um, like Adobe and OpenAI create these new paradigms that prevent anyone from just running models on their own um, under the guise of safety. Like safety is important, but it's also just being used as a tool to, to be wrapped around a baseball bat of uh, regulation and government. And then after that more serious stuff, they say, yeah, creative control. So Dolly 3 is designed to decline requests that ask for an image in the style of a living artist. So they're respecting artists that are living. That's kind of ironic. Uh, you can recreate whatever a dead artist did, but if they're living and their copyright still stands, do whatever you want. So that's, uh, that's an interesting take. And they have some cool stuff here. I mean, this is probably the, one of the more impressive ones here. Uh, and they have the prompts here, so that's kind of interesting. Some architectural stuff. I do know a lot of architects using this and they, they dislike using um, some of the more like mid-journey-like tools because they're just not, they don't give you enough control. Um, they'd, they'd rather have more control than just have it look cool. Um, but there is some really cool stuff here. Clearly, I could see this being in PowerPoint uh, in a lot of other Microsoft products that would supercharge a lot of that. And unfortunately, that's all they told us so far. So we'll keep an eye out in early October to see when this officially comes out. I think the images coming out of this are incredible and it'll be curious to see if um, the prompting process here is faster or more distinct than mid-journey. I think it's going to be different than what a lot of stable diffusion does. But I, again, I think it's important to distinguish, you know, all AI um, image generators are not the same. They do very similar things, but they do them in very different ways. And it'll be really curious to see if this tool, you know, it'll be more enterprise and more kind of locked down, but I'm willing to bet that it will likely be more capable in certain areas than Midjourney. So um, tell us what you think in the comments. If you really like our videos, um, please like and subscribe and share. Check out our link for promo for Vast AI if you want to run Stable Diffusion or SDXL on, your, uh, on a rented GPU. And uh, we'll see you in the next video.